Another consequence of our warming climate are changes in insect populations. So a classic example is the spruce bark beetle on the Kenai Peninsula, the Copper River Basin, and South Central Alaska increased in population generation from one generation per summer to two generations per summer. And that caused an explosion of spruce bark beetle in that location. In boreal interior Alaska, we have prolonged infestations of the aspen leaf miner where historically infestations of the aspen leaf miner were for one or two summers. And now with a warming climate, it was a decade long infestation of aspen leaf miner. And then willow leaf miner is a new insect occurring on the scene and it also has a prolonged infestation of a decade long. So climate warming will also affect insect populations, which will also affect the browning trend we see in boreal Alaska. Okay, so if we compute a summer moisture index for Fairbanks, summer drought is getting more severe and also more frequent. So here we have the last 45 years of summer drought, and 2004 was four standard deviations below the mean, and 2013 was more than three standard deviations below the mean. So extreme summer drought occurring, and it's occurring more frequently. And that has led to a lag effect of tree mortality, especially on warmer sites. So on ridgeline sites especially, we see a much more tree mortality. And that also contributes to the browning trend that we see throughout interior Alaska. Okay, so up to this point, I've not talked about fire. All the NDVI trends have been outside of areas that burned recently. But fire is a big player on the Alaskan landscape. So here's an example of the area that burned during the 50-year period from 1940 to 1990, 12.8 million hectares. If we look at the area that burned since that, it's only a 24-year period and more area burn, 13.8 million hectares. So fire is becoming more frequent. We're getting larger areas burning. So for example, last summer was the number two year in terms of hectares burned throughout the entire state. 2004 was the top year in terms of hectares burned throughout the entire state. And then we're also getting, as climate warms, more severe fires. With declining sea ice, we're also getting warmer falls. So here's an example from Barrow. The mean October temperature at Barrow in relationship to the mean October sea ice concentration in the Chukchi Sea or the Beaufort Sea. And we have a strong linear relationship that as sea ice concentration declines, the mean October temperature has warmed. And this may lead to increased tundra fires in the Arctic tundra area of Alaska. So here's an example, September 2007, the Anatubic River fire, the largest tundra fire recorded in Arctic Alaska up to this point. And here's a graph from a paper from Who et al, where we have declining sea ice extent, and then this is the area burned in 2007. So they have argued in this paper that with declining sea ice, we're likely to see more tundra fires in the Arctic. As the climate warms and we have warmer falls, we have a mismatch for herbivores such as snowshoe hares and ptarmigan. And these critters typically turn to their winter white color based on the shortening day length in September. And yet in the boreal region, we may not have snow on the ground until November, so they're vulnerable to predation. Another consequence of our warming falls could be an increase in the fire season. So I took this from the local newspaper, Rip from the Headlines, Mississippi fire near Delta Junction flares up. And the date is October 30th, 2013. So temperatures reached a record high 62 degrees at Delta Junction and wind gusts up to 63 miles per hour. So one of the consequences of our warming fall could be an extension of our fire season.
Another consequence of a warming fall and our warming winter, something that we have not seen very much until the last five or six winters are winter rains. So I took these headlines from our local newspaper. Bizarre winter storm plagues interior Alaska with rain. Fairbanks sets record high temperature. Wind and warmth causes power outages. Schools close. Thousands in Fairbanks region still without power due to winter storm. So what happens is we get winter rains, and the winter rain accumulates on the canopy of these tall white spruce trees. And then overnight, those canopies ice up. And then with wind, we get windfall of these tall white spruce trees. And many of those fall over power lines, leading to record power outages throughout interior Alaska.